everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm so excited again to have Mark Christopher Lee join us. This is another documentary, investigative documentary that he created, and it's called The King of UFOs. And you guys have to watch it. It's amazing. Of course, I'll have all the links to where you can find this film as well as Mark's um, website and any social media information below in the comments section, in the description section of this video. And I will have it running across the screen as well. So Mark, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Super excited. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Caroline. Yeah, of thanks course. for having me back. Of course, I love your work. So I'm a big fan. Lovely. Now tell us about yourself now in our last video of course i i have a big description of who you are and i'll post that again but let the folks know who you are and tell us about your musical career too because i found that really riveting i think folks would definitely want to know about that so give us a yeah. few minutes and just tell us you know what you've been up to why we're here today and about your your work sure uh yeah thank you for asking well basically yeah i've been a uh, the last 20 six years i've been a musician in a band called the pocket gods we've released 77 albums i think now about four thousand songs i'm um, quite famous for taking on spotify for fair royalties so we did a campaign uh releasing just 30 second songs because spotify pays out a really really tiny royalty after 30 seconds so why write longer songs uh, and so i maxed it out i put 100 on one album and then 300 and 500 and then we got the guinness world record of a thousand songs on one album uh so that that's that kind of claim to fame and how i got into filmmaking was that i wanted to tell this story because it's quite an interesting story because we're not a massively famous band but we've made a big impact and i'm also kind of taking on the corporate giants as well so and uh so yeah i made a film called inspired the 30 second song uh story and that's that's on YouTube in America, on the movie channel. And uh, I didn't really know what I was doing, but it kind of tells a story. So then I joined Rain Dance, who do the film festival, film school, to learn how to make films properly. And then I kind of, you need to make films about things you're passionate about. So music, I've done that. My other big passion, or main passion, is UFOs, paranormal, spirituality. And I really kind of want to make films about that and try and, investigate, see what it is, see how I can prove the existence that there is something else out there. Because I have a science degree, so I am also quite scientific, but I do have an open mind. And I, my own experiences have led me to believe that there is there's more to life than just this physical reality, this physical plane that we're on. And so through these films, including this new one, The King of UFOs, which you mentioned kindly, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, so here we are. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so let's jump right into it. Um, I found this documentary really fascinating. Uh, and you have a lot of uh, authoritative uh, guests mm -hmm. speaking mm -hmm. about it, including Nick Pope and the likes of, mm -hmm. of him. So like I said before, I really recommend people, if you're into ufology, you'll want to learn about its origins dating back to to the royal family, I, I would think. I mean, I found it really um, helpful in in my endeavors as well. So, what what? How did you discover this? Like, I'm of course you you're a ufologist and your passion lives here. But how? What was the driving force behind the creation of this one? Uh, well, I met someone, uh, a, a British ufologist called John Hansen, who's a retired police detective. Uh, he's a very kind of straight guy. And then he, he kind of, one of his colleagues in the police force had a UFO experience. And after that, John decided to take it seriously and, you know, look into it. And basically now he runs this uh, Br British UFO learning centre in Stratford-upon-Avon, where Shakespeare's from. And he's got thousands and thousands of documents of uh, UFO sightings, uh, mostly in the UK, all detailed, detailed drawings. He's got videos, he's got photographs. It's the most amazing place, but nobody knows about it. And anyway, he's also published various books. 
And he used to correspond. He showed me the letters that he received back from Prince Philip, the Queen, and various other members of the royal family. He's got a picture of him uh, and Lord Mountbatten. His uncle was friends with Lord Mountbatten. So he's got this connection with the royal family that he was a liaison with them with about UFOs and crop circles. And it kind of just blew my mind. It's like, whoa, I didn't know this. You know, I, I really didn't know. I knew that Lord Mountbatten had an interest because people have written about that before. And then Prince Philip. But I never knew about the Queen being into it. And then the Queen and Prince Philip, John told me that they, they've got their own library of books, of, you know, supernatural, paranormal UFOs. It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, so that was the cat catalyst for this film. And then I, I, someone had seen my previous film, God versus Aliens, some Canadian guy and really liked it. Uh, he was a Christian, but he was like, he, he liked the spiritual aspect of the film and all the themes that I raised. And he got in touch and said, I've got this amazing story that uh, I saw, you know, Prince Charles fly this prototype UFO in Canada. And it's like, whoa. And that's how the film came together. I thought, well, I could tie this together with the historical information that I've got records for with this, this guy's uh, testimony. So that's how it came together. And I thought, this could make for an interesting film and open people's minds that if you know, important figures, people deem quite straight and, or, you know, uh, you know, above board, you know, actually looking into this phenomena, then, you know, maybe we should all be doing it as well. Absolutely. Now, when yeah. you say he flew a craft, was this a government craft, do you think, or do you think it was extraterrestrial? Prince I Charles. Don't think, yeah. Uh, this guy is called Dan Costello. He's a Canadian. He was a diver at the time. And it's in Sandy Point in Nova Scotia in 1976, I think it was. Uh, and he was working there. And there was there was some secret government operation there, which was mostly underwater. Uh, and there's these big caissons where they stored weapons, munitions, things like that. A lot of it carried over from the Second World War. And they were supposed to be a secret base after the Second World War in case Hitler won. It was all linked to that. And... This guy, Dan Costello, he saw uh, Prince Charles as one of three pilots in this weird craft. And it, I guess the best way to describe it, it, it's like some sort of futuristic helicopter because it had dual rotor, bra uh, rotor blades. But then it also had uh, a weird blue ionic plasma coming out the back of it, which is odd. It, so it, the blades would stop and it would just hang there, and which is impossible for a conventional helicopter. So... What I, my investigations have led me to believe that it had conventional, you know, uh, you know, engines with the rotary blades, but it also had some some weird new technology, uh, possibly linked to Tesla because Tesla did operations and experiments in in this area, and it's been documented uh, because this blue plasma uh, had a devastating effect on the on you know the ground below it. It would turn the soil basically to glass, vitrify it. Uh, so it was very, very weird. But answering your question, I think it was possibly US, Canadian government with the British, maybe the Five Eyes agreement that we had this technology because this yeah. craft was alleged to have been flown to NASA in uh, Langley in America. And that's where Charles was taking it. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's an incredible story. Uh, I mean, I have to... There is some evidence, not a massive amount, uh, but I have had people come forward actually since the film's been released to say, yeah, actually it did happen. There was this thing called the Sandy Point in incident, which has backed it up. Uh, and Dan is, you know, I do believe what he says. He's got no reason to lie. Uh, so. Yeah, he goes into pretty good detail about that whole incident as well. Wasn't he hired as a scuba diver or something? Yeah, he was. He, yeah, he was. Yeah, that's because a lot of it was underwater. Right. Uh, and he was, a, he was a child at the time, which some people say, well, oh, kids make stuff up. Well, he doesn't. I don't, mm -hmm. don't think he's making it up. It had a profound Im impact on him. But they were using him as a child because he had access to places where, you know, the adults couldn't fit, basically. And he was trying to get stuff out of this Second World War uh, salvage storage place, really. That's how he got involved. And... Uh, yeah, he was hired by the UK government. Uh, so it was some some secret project. He said it was called Project Serpico was wow. the name of it. 
God. All fascinating, really. Mm. Mm. Now, we, we've all heard about um, the British royalty, their mm. properties being, you know, haunted. And and who mm. was it? Prince William said he saw a, a spirit, right? Yeah, it is his property in Norfolk uh, where he lives with uh, his family. Yeah, it's that, that's, that's an old uh, ghost that's been there a long time. I think we, we spoke to Richard Felix, who's a paranormal historian, has been on TV's Most Haunted. He knows all about ghosts and how they're basically attracted to, well, basically they're held as, he, his theory is, is it's the stone tape theory, uh, right. where he's got this, these ancient buildings made of stone and, and it's like a magnetic tape. Right. So they're capturing this energy and replaying it. And that's why there's a lot in old castles, old historic houses. So that's like um, residual hauntings. They're not like, yeah. Yeah, those, yeah. It's like a playback, really. And uh, that's why, and that's what we've got in these royal properties. Uh, and, you know, the the thing is with Prince, uh, King, Prince, he's not King yet. <laughs> <It's really, laughs> he, he, you know, for him, it's just, oh, yeah, he's a ghost. You know, we live with right. it. It's fine. It's like a, you know, a normal occurrence to the royals because they live in these, you know, historic places that are haunted. That's a fact. Yeah, it's fascinating. You, you know, we we all heard of those, but never really the UFO UAP kind of connection. So, um, mm. but that dates back as well, right? Yeah, it was Prince Albert we found who made an entry in his diet in his diary that he saw strange orbs moving around in the sky. Uh, so that was that was an old one uh, that we found, uh, which kind of tied in with his spiritualism uh, beliefs uh and then we had the victorian seances yes that at that time uh, so you know that it started in the victorian age this kind of belief widespread belief that there's something else out there and that we can make contact with it mostly it was through uh seances and contacting you know the dead or the in-between and that became massive in victorian times uh you know, and, and Queen Victoria got into it massively because she wanted to contact her dead husband, <laughs> Prince Albert. So it is interesting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what what Prince Albert, that was like what, 1875 or six, something? It was, yeah, had. 1875. Yeah. Yeah. So he had was it him that had the experience or his groundkeeper? I forget when I watched the doctor. No, it was him. It's him who had it. Was a, him. Yeah, yeah. It, the uh, groundskeeper, that was uh, Lord Mountbatten. Ah, right. He was the next one, really, to get into UFOs. And he was uh, basically Admiral of the Navy, uh, an English lord. He had this big estate in Hampshire in England uh, called Broadlands. And basically his groundsman, uh, Fred, I can't remember his name. I think <laughs> Fred he was some... a bricklayer, you said, or something? He was a bricklayer, yeah. Right. Uh, and worked on his grounds and uh, he saw uh, this craft land and it shook him up so much it knocked him off his bike uh, and it sounds fantastical but he actually this guy Fred did uh, swore an affidavit at which Matt Batten signed and vouched to his you know character that he wouldn't make things up uh, so it, which is really bizarre not many people know about this and it was only uncovered through uh, Matt Batten's archives being released and made public, that wow. someone found this uh, fascinating story. But Matt Batten was massively into UFOs anyway, so it's strange how this craft was attracted to his his estate. It was like, okay, is there a connection? I don't know. But uh, Matt Batten, because he was in the navy and always on ships, he was always seeing things and making uh, notes in his logbook and things like that of strange stuff that he saw, and he passed his knowledge and passion onto his nephew prince philip okay and uh, prince philip then became massively uh, interested in, in in ufos and you know in the 1950s it was kind of big big news it was new and it was sexy exciting right. and, you know and it was everywhere and <laughs> prince philip being you know a young man into he qualified as an engineer and he was you know quite scientific but he wants to you know what are these things visiting us? Yeah. So, and he had his, uh, his uh, what's his word, his equerry, 
was a guy called Sir Peter Horsley. And he would get his, because you have to re realise it was difficult for Prince Philip to, to go out to UFO meetings and politically sensitive, you know, he couldn't just be seen to be the UFO guy. Right. So he acted through his equerry, Sir Peter Horsley, who would go out and meet UFO people, collect records, update the prints on what was happening. And then there's a really weird encounter uh, uh, where this entity called Janus. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. What exactly is that? Well, th this entity was called Janus. It was in a he, it was living in a flat in Chelsea, and he wanted to meet Prince Philip. And this Janus met with Sir Peter Horsley and said, "You know, I want to meet the prince because we need to save the world. I need to give him this information. The aliens are here to help you." But I really want to speak to him in person. And so Sir Peter Halsey was trying to arrange this meeting, uh, but it, it never happened. And, you know, later on, we probably found out that Janus was, was most likely a, a Russian spy uh, because that would seem the most sensible option. But you never know. It could have been an alien. Uh, there's no proof either way. Uh, but it was the Cold War and... Maybe the Russians knew about Philip's interest in UFOs and was exploiting that as a potential weakness to gain secrets because that's what they did, wow. spies did. Mm. Do you think the royals have information about um, U UAPs, UFOs that we don't have in America? I, I do, yeah. And uh, Richard Felix alluded to this he talked about the Vatican archives, which everyone knows, and there's supposed to be all sorts of secrets hidden there, which no one's, you know, allowed access to. But he says, you know, the royal family have got their own archives dating back just as far, really, uh, held in Windsor Castle, Buckingham Palace. And so he, he thinks there's things in there, records alluding to UFOs, UAPs, whatever you want to call them, mm. other weird phenomena that they've collected, uh, you know, because they you know, the rulers of the country. They're, they're the ones, I know we have a, you know, political democracy now, but technically the king and queen are still head of state. Right. Uh, so they, you know, they, they're the ultimate, if we want to go to war, we have to get, you know, the king's, <laughs> the king's signature on that. Um, so I do think they hold secrets. I mean, the royal family, I'm not going to criticize them because they are what they are, but the whole royal family is about secrets. They've always had secrets. Yeah. You know, we we never know the truth. They never tell the truth. Now, you know, for a long time, you know, and Diana came in and she kind of didn't she like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she wouldn't, you know, she wouldn't play a little for the, for the bull crap, so to say. And, you know. And look where she ended up. Precisely, yeah. So, you know, and I, I assume there could be something going on now with, with Catherine. Who knows? But with, again, it's you're not going to get the truth. They're not going to come out and say, well, this is happening. This is the reality. Yeah, so and I think that's out. awful. Like, at least be like America and lie about the truth, you know? <laughs> yeah. well, Just lie about it, and at least it appeases the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but they did. this royal family here has still got that kind of mask, and they'll, they'll never let it slip, really. Uh, but, you know. Well, we have Nick Pope, and he, he does a fine hmm. job. You know, of, but I'm sure there's a lot he can't say. He's he's in your film quite, you know, quite a few times, too. And in past documentaries you, you've made. So he's a good authoritative yeah. uh, voice. He is. Yeah. And he worked for the British Ministry of Defence. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there's stuff that he can't talk about because he signed the Official Secrets Act. So maybe he'll have a deathbed confession. Oh, my word. <laughs> Hopefully not yet, Nick. No, Nick. <laughs> no, no. We have a long like way to go. He's actually based in uh, in America, so. Oh, is he uh, now? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He's married to an American, so. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't been. Yeah, yeah. So he's quite clued up into what's going on in, in U.S. politics as well. Regards. Yeah, I to... see him all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he, no, and he's always got something riveting and interesting to talk about. So. He's, he's a lovely guy, and when I first started investigating ufos i i did i worked for a magazine actually in new york i wasn't based in new york it was called dig this real and i was editor at large and i could write about anything i wanted so i wanted to write about ufos and i contacted various people in ufology and he was the kindest one that got back to me he didn't want pay and was happy to help and uh 
we've been in touch ever since. So I've always, I've always got a soft spot for Nick for making time for a. Yeah, no, he's a, he seems like a great guy. He really does. Mm. He has a very good reputation too. Um, let's talk about Rendlesham Forest a little bit, which was in uh, Hangham, yeah. is it England back in 1980, right? Yeah, it's in Suffolk in England. Suffolk. And, yeah, and that's that's my next film, which I'm just editing, or we are just editing. Matt, my director editor, is working hard at the moment, and this is this is the most amazing film that I've ever done. The King of UFO is I'm really proud of. I'm very grateful to Rain Dance for funding it but this one takes it to the next level uh i mean basically yeah 1980 Rendlesham forest and suffolk there was a nato base there was, so there's american troops stationed there raf bent waters it's christmas weekend 1980 and they saw weird lights appear in the forest dancing around and they sent a party party out colonel holt who was in charge he was there he went out and there's various accounts, but there was weird things going on in the forest, weird lights. It wasn't the lighthouse. Some people say it was. It wasn't. Uh, and allegedly a craft landed. Uh, and there was one of the one of the airmen there, Jim Pennistone. He went up to the craft, allegedly it's translucent, and he touched it. And he claims to have had a binary download of information, which years later he's, he's managed to decode. And it's a message about trying to save humanity. It's a very, very strange place. And our, our, our film is not just about that 1980 one-off incident. It's about the whole weirdness of the place. It's about Rendlesham being the British Roswell, but also being a, a portal to another, another dimension, possibly. I don't know, there's some weird stuff happening. And I've interviewed people, there's a guy called Philip Kinsella. He's also an author and ufologist. He's been down there. He's manifested a pyramid-shaped UFO. Uh, John Hansen, the police officer I spoke to earlier, told you about earlier, he's been down there with people and they've seen orbs, manifested orbs, lights, a UFO. I've got video footage of what they manifested. It's nothing like anything I've seen. So what we wanted to do was go down there and try and manifest the UFO by through meditation, See what well, we you do, do that anyway, right? I mean, that's something you do that anyway, yeah. But right. we want to try this place because this is allegedly a hot spot. Uh, and we got some weird, weird stuff. Uh, it's oh. verging on the paranormal. It's uh, we can't explain it, and I'm really looking forward to uh, oh, to yeah. When is it. this going to be released again? What's the uh, date? It should be finished this month, and then we'll be oh, nice putting it out. After is that, this and going that, to be um, in the usual places where your films can be found? Well, yeah, we want to get out everywhere. Uh, so, yeah, it will be. It's going to be called Re the Rendlesham UFO, the British Roswell. Because everyone's heard about Roswell, haven't they? Right. It's it's world folklore now, not just American. But no one's heard of Rendlesham hardly. But it's just, you know, just as crazy. And it's, I think it's even weirder than... Roswell. There's more evidence. I do too. I mean, yeah. didn't one of the military guys that that was called out that night make a tape recording? Oh yeah, yeah. That's Colonel Holtz. Yeah. I yeah. Right. Holtz. Right. Tell yeah. us about that a little bit. Well, yeah, he was the uh, deputy uh, commander of the base at the time, and he was technically in charge that weekend. So he went out there to see what he, expecting to debunk it of just you know crazy soldiers seeing stuff but he went out there and was like oh, okay and he had this dictaphone which he carried with him and he made uh recordings of what he saw and you can see him getting freaked out and saying oh the, the orbs are coming through the forest they're coming at me oh they split off and just shot up in the air and all this weird stuff he's describing as it happens and you can see the kind of fear and anxiety in his voice so that is a documented case of a, a you know a ufo i mean what it was people are still debating about it uh but i think def something definitely happened there because stuff has happened there since you know 20 30 40 years later stuff is still happening in that place what does the british government say about it do they as silent as they typically are, they had to come out with some type of formal statement or something right what what was there no not point? really no i mean <sighs> Not, I mean, Nick Pope has looked at it as, when he was in the Ministry of Defence. He reviewed the files, and uh, in the files, 
they did come out and found there were background levels of radiation were higher than normal. There was indentations on the ground where something might have landed. The trees were badly burned and things like that. So they found some evidence, but no formal statement was given. It was only because of Colonel Holtz, who had the dictaphone, only because he did an official letter to the MOD, which you know eventually got released, that you know that we, that we know about it. Basically, it's only because of Colonel Holt that we know about Rendlesham. The British government didn't want anything to do with it, uh, and it was tr tricky politically because it was a NATO. It was the Cold Cold War at the time, so we had American troops on British soil. Uh, so there was a lot of politics going on, and people say some of the evidence. One of the generals had sent to Germany, and there was photographs at the time, uh, and they were sent to Germany. I mean, I don't know how true that is. And then the the same general has apparently given recently a deathbed confession. He died, but on his deathbed, he told his son and daughter the truth about Rendlesham. However, <laughs> in true UFO style, his son and daughter weren't paying for it. <laughs> so we're trying to get that confession, but they weren't paying so it's like, okay. It's terrible how it always <laughs> comes down to money and Yeah, I know it's it, yeah. It's like an international trait, you know, like well no, I mean this is, my film my film's about making I wanna make open people's minds, not just people who are already into UFOs, but you know, just ordinary people to get them to open their mind to think there's more out there than their humdrum existence and might, you know, raise their lives a little bit. That's, absolutely that's really. oh absolutely i mean it, it's sometimes like i i sometimes feel odd when i talk to people about the topic of ufology because they look at you weird like you know you get that look oh <laughs> conspiracy theorist whack job or something you know yeah. so you, and that's why i love doing these types of interviews because i like people to discover their own truth you know just mm -hmm. Read and research, watch and learn, and you discover what you believe to be true, you know? Absolutely. And just open yourself, open your mind to th things. Things might happen to you if you open your mind. That's the thing. And yeah. Someone just told me that who's a, who's a, a contactee. And mm. she said that, um, and she's very reputable. I'm going to be interviewing her shortly. Um, she said that they all hear us and they're having some type of problem coming uh to earth at this time it's got something to do with the solar mm. energy so uh, that's yeah, why yeah. some of them yeah. were crashing we're going to talk about that but she said they're they're very telepathic and mm. if you talk to them and you do that mark mm. and you will them to appear that they often do mm. and she said it does take practice and you know you have to sharpen your telepathic skills but she yeah. does it all the time you know she's in communication with them and they're not demonic which brings me to my next mm. question uh, was it prince philip who was warned mm. uh you mentioned in your documentary right that they could be demonic yeah it Told was that. yeah it was one of the yeah, it was lord admiral hill norton it was uh and had he was uh researching ufos for the british government and he had advising him this reverend uh paul inglesby and Paul Inglesby was convinced that UFOs were demonic uh, and shouldn't be investigated. And this was passed on to Prince Philip. He got one of these reports uh, stating that we shouldn't investigate UFOs. Uh, the, you, sorry, the British government shouldn't invest, investigate them because they are demonic. Mm. And that's a similar belief to some in the US government uh, that we found out with the Collins elite. And that's why we're not getting full disclosure because there are those in the Pentagon uh, you know, quite committed Christians that do think that all UFOs are demonic, and you know, there's various passages in the Bible. Right. Actually, go in, we go into this a little bit in in the new film. Uh, I speak to Daniel Thompson, who's my favourite reverend, who's in all our films. <laughs> but he, he quotes this passage in the Ephesians where there are seven levels of heaven, and how uh, there's demons there in between, and it's all a cult stuff and that's what they refer to really and lucifer being the lord of the air uh it's got a lot to do with that doesn't mean it's true but that's that's where these evangelical christians say that they are demonic uh I, I i tend not to think that i just kind of report what other people say right i think there's 
I mean, I've spoken to various people about it, and uh, I think uh, the vast majority of ETs, whatever you want to call them, are, are good and here here to help. But there is, you know, like life, there is light and there's dark. So there is a dark side. So it's going to be the same uh, with other entities. That's what I think. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, there's been so many accounts of them deactivating nukes, you know, here. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that's okay. definitely a good thing. So, um, what's, what's is it? Rendlesham, they say, was also harboring uh, nuclear weapons. It was a nuclear, uh, NATO. Oh, nuclear right. I did hear that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, that's possibly why they were attracted to, to that area. So, are you very happy with the outcome of, of, the Rendlesham documentary, like a people going to be oohing and on when they watch it. Yeah, I, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, I, I'll just tell you one thing. I haven't really spoken about about it yet, but so we we captured on on tape some weird. Bearing in mind, we're in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's the middle of a forest. There's no one around. We had this weird electronic clicking sound, uh, but which we couldn't explain. I wasn't by an animal. It wasn't. It was just weird electronic, spacey sound that we kept. And then we kept bouncing around the forest from bit, different areas, and we tried to find it and we couldn't. And then we, when we went searching for it, it was getting dark and we saw orbs bouncing around the woods. So it was really weird. But then we did have a bit of a, a darker moment as well. On the way back, we heard some uh, some animal howling, uh, oh. which we. Could, we couldn't kind of, it kind of, I wasn't scared, but the rest of the crew were. Was it like a Bigfoot hell? Quite possibly. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 what we're thinking because there is a, apparently, I, mean, I didn't notice at the time, there is a reports of a, some sort of cryptid called uh, the yeah. Rendlesham Shrug Monkey that Nick Redfern has, has written about. That's actually in that forest. So, yeah, which... And then I've spoken to someone subsequently who says, yeah, you, you know, UFOs and uh, Sasquatch are, are, are linked. Yes. Uh, so I was like, yeah, that kind of makes sense then. Uh, but I guess we were a bit scared because it was dark and, you know, we're filming and it's like, I think we're, I was more concerned that we we're in the middle of nowhere and if it's some some yokel hillbilly types. You yeah, know? I mean, you never know, but mm. I, I have heard stories and have read that uh, often there are sightings of Bigfoots around UFO sightings as well, and that yeah. they possibly use them as like helpers too, like in wow. some fashion. Yeah, it, it's it's pretty fascinating, and especially when you when you hear about how Bigfoots are actually dimensional creatures and can appear. And well, this is it. Yeah, this that's fascinating, isn't it? How they're kind of interdimensional. Uh, yes, and that's what I'm tending to go towards at the moment. Well, it makes so, a lot of sense because they're here and gone all the time. Like every time. Well, yeah. 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 Does, makes a lot of yeah sense. That's, why, that's why we never find find them really. Exactly. Yeah. Except you have that, uh, what is that um, footage? Somebody Gilbert footage. The Gimlin, one. Gimlin, Gimlin, Gimlin. Yeah. I always forget his name, but I mean, that's pretty yeah. thin. Now they, did you know they redigitized that mm. and released it? If you go on Timothy Alberino's YouTube channel, he's got the yeah. whole thing. It's fascinating to there's watch. A, yeah, there's, a, there's another good one as well by this 80s guy who shot it on VHS, this Bigfoot hunter. And uh, he was like a massive seven foot, six, what, six foot nine guy, 300 pounds. And he was at, you could hear the fear in his voice when he was oh, filming. Yeah. And it's like, it, I don't think he was faking it. It was on VHS as well. And that, I can't remember his name now. But it's, yeah. it's another thing. Well, that's definitely something. It's not an ape. And, uh, <laughs> no, no. Not a bear. I, mean, I, think, I, I think they exist. I, you know, I always say that if you wait long enough, the truth always floats to the top, and you just mm. have to. And I think eventually somebody will prove their their. I mean, we have footprints and casted footprints. Yeah, we do, yeah. And, yeah, we have so much, so much. Did you need special permission? to record in Rendlesham or is it just open to the public? The it's open to the public, yeah. We didn't need any permission now. It's uh it's it's kind of uh it's forestry commission uh land, but uh yeah there was no access issues at all. It's open twenty four hours a day. Wow. And how many days were you there for? 
Uh, we we did two trips. Uh, so we, I went up on my own first time. And the other weird thing that happened was uh, this Philip Kinsella author and ufologist I mentioned earlier, I interviewed him about Rendlesham. And he had this diamond-shaped craft appear. But he said, you know, when you first go up there, go to the East Gate, which is where the RAF base was and the American soldiers came off. And he goes, let me know if you get any strange smells. And I did. I went there and I got this really strange medical, stale, like a hospital smell. It was like in the middle of nowhere. It was really weird. And uh, he said, yeah, that's right. So it was, it was just weird. It's just like I couldn't explain medical it. Medical really. smell. So it wasn't like a, a Sasquatch smell, which is often. No, no. No, it was, it was, it was like a disinfectant. But there was nothing there to like. Ah. I try. You try and debunk things, don't you? But it's just you know there wasn't any flowers around that smelled like it. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't uh, explain it. It was just another, another one it, of those weird things. What, was it there the whole time, or was it fleeting? No, it was there the whole time, but just in this one spot. But there was nothing nearby to be for it to be emanating from. But it's where everything kicked off that 1980 weekend from those gates so i don't know so you, you actually went up there by yourself the first time well yeah with, with matt uh, oh, my, oh, oh. uh camera and editor and director uh first time bring, and then, like night gear with you and you know all that good stuff to record or we, we did bring a lot of equipment we uh we took an emf meter and uh that was weird as well i mean i'm giving all the all the good stuff away. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. People have we, to see it. That's fine. We got an EMF meter out, and uh, so we got background readings, which was basically nothing. Yeah. But when we started, when we started meditating in this area where the UFO allegedly landed, it just kept spiking weirdly, really into the red, and it's all on camera, so you'll see it. It's going, oh, I can't wait. And then we also we old old school. We had if you had a dowsing rods. Oh, those are awesome. We had those. That's how we found our spot to to sit and do the meditation. We found them, and they were going crazy. Thought, oh, we've got to do it here. But when when we started hearing these sounds, we got them out again, and they were just flipping, going absolutely crazy. Wow, I can't. Yeah, wait and then we had spikes on the EMF meter, and then I had a metal detector, and that was picking up at the crash that alleged crash that we went to. We scoured the area, and it was just picking up right bits of metal everywhere but not big bits you could dig up it's just scattered in the whole soil like minute bits set in. so some like something landed and left it thing was there it. yeah That's so tell, tell us about which i found to be fascinating because there's a, a correlation a tie between uh the queen and how she requested secret documents from the vatican's archives they're supposed to be like 53 miles of documents or something secret documents like what was that? You, you go through that in in the in the King of UFOs, but well, yeah. I mean, we don't know what it was. We know that she did request, and and Richard Felix talks about this because he's investigated it. That you know, she put in a request, you know, to the Pope basically saying, you know, can you give me access to certain UFO documents because she was interested in it, and she's the Queen, so she, you know, she can ask for stuff if she wants. You know, it's like how did so, we find out that she did that? Uh, that's through an interview of one of her intermediaries that actually arranged it. Someone who told Richard that, yeah, this is what happened uh, because of her interest, really. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it was anything political involved that she was trying to do something. She, she, just out of her curiosity, she knew the Vatican had more information than she's got, you know, and the Vatican, you know, allegedly got all sorts of alien skulls and yeah. You know, uh, maybe even a UFO. Some some say that landed in no. Sicily and Mussolini recovered. But so who knows? And the Vatican do know more than probably any other organization on the planet, uh, just because of their their age and their power. And also, they might you know maybe even the origins of Christianity. They know that there's something more to it. So you know, it's so interesting because you always see like so much mysticism about the royal family because they're never like just out there like i said before with with the truth about things and people then make up all these you know all their lizards and they make up all oh, this stuff yeah, I know. and i guess the royal family would rather deal with that than you know confronting some of the 
facts. I yeah, I mean, there's a lot. I guess a lot of nasty stuff that's been on yeah. just personally with who they slept with, all the illegitimate children and things like that. It's like Prince Philip's will. Okay, won't be released to the public for like eighty years. That's crazy. It's crazy because obviously there's probably all sorts in there of children he's paid off and things like that. Because of all is that the same as what you mentioned in the documentary about his archives not being released for like 80 or 90 is that is that what you're talking about that's, that's part of it yeah that's part of yeah. it yeah 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 it's part of all his documents usually they are released a lot sooner than that but because they want to keep things secret and hidden it could be it could be ufo stuff but most right. likely also personal stuff we'll all be dead and gone before that even happened <laughs> i mean it's so ridiculous but, it's, but this is it why is it the case i guess yeah I mean, isn't there anybody that can, in the, in the legal system in, in the UK, that can fight that? Or I don't, I don't know. I guess so it's got to be somewhere. You've got to break into a place somewhere. I don't know. So then, weird. But then Dan Dan Costello, the diver, he's a bit paranoid at the moment that you know because we're, we've released this film and then oh, is he? They're going to be kind of coming after us, but I don't think so. We don't say anything too controversial. And we don't go into the whole uh, lizard thing. Because when I tell people, oh, we're making a film about the royal family in UFS, what, alien lizards? No, nothing to do with lizards. <laughs> but it's people so want that movie. <laughs> people are desperate for alien lizard movie. Yeah, I don't know. what. I don't know. That's all. I see it everywhere, too. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think it's... You know, it's yeah. a shame that, you know, even here in the States, like, you have to be afraid to speak the mm. truth, your experience, you know, I mean, it's, it's awful. Um, the fear, the level of fear that's, that's out there. Yeah, I think so. You've got to be able to speak the truth. I mean, you've got to be respectful of other people, but uh, there's, you right. know, but that shouldn't hinder your well, own. Look what opinion. they do to whistleblowers. I mean. Well, it's like David Grush who came out. Isn't right, it? I was just going to mention uh, it. He's been quite brave. You know, he's a decorated pilot. But then people have picked up on the fact, oh, he's got PTSD, he's got mental health problems. Yeah, he's a freaking ex-serviceman. Exactly. He's, he's been in battle. He's going to have PTSD. That's where the condition PTSD was first diagnosed was from war veterans. So they've got good reason to have that. And to use that as a weapon against him, it's just horrible. You know, there used to be a red line, like I, I remember even growing up where in politics and you know, they didn't cross, like you didn't talk about the wife, the kids, you know, there was a red line. Now this, like, it's all hell break, breaks. Oh, gosh, it's, it's a free fall, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it no, just is awful. And it's and just... the UFO community suffers for it, you know, and then you see infighting in the UFO community, which is not good either. There's a lot of that going on. It's, yeah, I mean, it's something that I try not to get involved in. I, I yeah. try to remain friends with everyone, but there are, there are cliques and I, I come into it and it's like, well, this person likes this person, this person hates that person. And when I'm interviewing people, I've got to be really careful because, like, you know, there's a lot of people that are kind of they're trying to get their own little bit of UFO territory, I guess, and defend it and have their... Whereas I just want to make it a free-for-all and get everyone, get the truth out to the public. I'm, I don't care you ever get... about my ego. People say my films are rubbish. And so that's fine. They're entitled to that. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, you can to, to get the message out there. I've got no ego when it comes to this. I'm not doing it for my own. That's self brilliant. Glory. That's uh, brilliant. So I appreciate you coming, you know, coming on shows like this. Oh, my gosh. Of course. I always enjoy speaking with you. And while your films are fantastic, I love watching them. And I'm, I always share them around for folks. Um, have you ever gotten any threats or things that have made you feel like particularly nervous about exposing what you what you do? Have, have you ever gotten moments? No. Well, that's great. Have. No, uh, and I've I've written to the king, a uh, nice polite letter. I had to look up how to address him in a letter. <laughs> it's like got to use certain words, right? So asking, just asking for a meeting. So I'm hoping he'll uh, respond, and we can. I'll go to the palace and chat about UFOs and have cups of tea. That would be nice. That would be awesome. That's <laughs> the plan. But, uh, no, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, no, I mean, I guess it's easy when you go down the rabbit hole to get paranoid. But I always try and 
and my wife's the same she encourages me to you know there's always there's lots of good in the world focus on that right uh, and, and you know you've got your conspiracy theorists people like david ike for instance you know a lot of what he says can be valid a little bit crazy sometimes but he's got some good points to make but then it gets so depressed because you know you think what's the point because <laughs> you know yeah. everyone else has got the control and it's like ah, and you get you into fear mode and when you're in fear mode that's no good for anyone is it so no i mean i think it's good to know these things be aware of them but live your daily life free of you know the burden of it you know what i mean like yeah i think so because it can be all consuming concepts and yeah drag you down which is i guess you could say that's what they want to drag people yeah. down absolutely so, what do you, yeah. what does disclosure look like to you in the future where, where do you see this all going just yeah, the, really, the disclosure of it all that's a really good question i mean i cannot answer it it's like because i think the ufo phenomena is it's not just nuts and bolts craft from an, another planet that somehow has found, found its way here, which is like impossible, really. To look at the vastness of the universe and how would anyone find us? It's, you know, because we're just a little grain of sand on a massive beach. So I'm more open to the fact that I think this phenomena is something else, spiritual, in, interdimensional, on another plane. And that would... We could deal now, I think, with E.T. from another planet. You know, it's in films. We're kind of used to that. We could think, get along with an alien race somehow. You know, it's just more politics, really. Uh, but if we had something else that was on a different plane of reality and then kind of actually after this life, it's not just death. or well, the afterlife, we go to somewhere else and then it's our kind of soul continues. That would just freak people out too much. So, which, which is why I think we haven't got disclosure. Uh, and that there are a few that know and maybe the billionaires who all know and they're keeping it secret I, d I don't know uh, I, I really don't know and it's I kind of want disclosure and I'm passionate about it that people should know the truth but I kind of understand why if I you know think what it if I believe what it is it's weird freak people out I, I kind of think well yeah maybe they're doing it to to stop us from i mean we won't be so easily controlled i guess if we knew we had the power of in to use our minds our consciousness right. you know i don't know if you think about it it might be intentional that well probably that these extraterrestrials are keeping themselves hidden like on a massive scale and just appear to certain people um, mm. I don't know if you heard of Preston Dennett. He's very, you know, okay. Well, yeah, he's a great guy. Um, he thinks in his, in his estimation that, and, and from his own experiences with being taken and whatnot, that a lot of these ETs contact people that are uh, moral and trying to help humanity. So, right. yeah. So he said that like, he's researched this inside and out. And his, um, I guess, premise was that they they do appear to people that are trying to be good humanitarians and and help other people because he was looking for like one unifying feature up, up amongst all of the folks that were taken and and that seemed to to really yeah so that is that, good yeah that makes me happy <laughs> yeah he he seems to be convinced of that. In his books, he talks about that frequently. And and it, I, I think that it might be a good idea that they stay hidden from us globally because not that I'm trying to be a Debbie Downer, but we tend to corrupt what we don't understand or where they think they can gain control and power. And who knows, yeah. maybe they'll try to corrupt that. Yeah, control it, monetize it. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's I guess, my fear of what's going on at the moment is that you know, the US government has farmed it out to private contractors like Raytheon and lots yeah. of Scott Works, and they're the ones that have this technology wherever it is. And they're trying to utilize it for war money. Oh, it's always you know, a military that. industrial complex. Yes. Uh, Preston also, got... go ahead. 
Yeah, just, I mean, I don't want to get into politics, but which is why yeah. I was quite interested in what RFK Jr. was, was saying yes. and and Trump a little bit with the UFO disclosure. Because I, I recently talked about a theory that JFK, Marilyn Monroe, possibly were assassinated because of UFOs, because uh, JFK knew, and then he, as Marilyn was his lover, passed the knowledge onto her that, you know, UFOs are real, and she was about to give a press conference a few days off before her death, so three days after she died, where she's going to release this, you know, truth to the public. Yeah, it's fascinating. So that, you know, if Trump said, I'm going to release all the JFK files, there's going to be stuff about UFOs in there. I'm sure RFK Jr. knows this, having had his uncle and father assassinated. Uh, so there is a possibility that, you know, that people want to keep it a secret and they, they will do anything to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, Preston also wrote a book about UFOs healing people. And he has, mm. uh, I think, 300 documented cases of um, interactions between extraterrestrials and, and people that have had grave illnesses, grave right. illnesses, cancers, yeah. all sorts of things. And yeah. these people were healed. Now, think about that. The government would not want that to happen because what would happen to the healthcare and pharmaceutical yeah. industry? No, 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 right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I hate to look at it as a source of corruption, but we well, yeah, always follow the money, though. That's, that's always a good right. advantage. Absolutely. It's yeah. interesting you say that because we interviewed for the Rendlesham film uh, Ray Dove, uh, and she's a CE5 practitioner, but she says she was healed. She was oh, serious. Oh, wow. Healed. She was. She told her story. It's really moving that she was healed by ETs, whatever you want to call them, uh, and she, she's fine now. Uh, so yeah, was she taken was... or did she just have an interaction? What, what's her name again? I'm sorry. A Dove. R A E Dove. D O V E. Uh, she's an amazing lady. Yeah, I and mean, she does the C five protocols. She she doesn't charge for it and. Uh, she just wants to make it accessible. Uh, but she could, first got into it through having her own. I think she was taken, yeah, and then she had interactions. But she was able to communicate with them telepathically and just through getting into deep meditative states. And she, right. she still can. But she was healed. She was seriously ill. And then something wow. to do this. And, yeah, so that's and that's in the film as well, her story, which is amazing. Oh, good. That's in the Rendlesham story? It is, yeah. So it's going to be Brilliant. an interesting thing. Mm. What, what's, what, what are you, uh, I'm sure you've got something after Rendlesham. Do you have anything that's piquing your curiosity that you want to work on or a book well, or I've something? Been, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been finishing books. I've done, uh, they're all out on Amazon now. Uh uh, basically based on the films that I've done but in more detail so I did God versus Aliens book is out there which is about the spiritual aspects of UFOs and how you know going through the Bible and all the interactions there then King of UFOs I've just done a book as well uh, which is out on Great. Amazon going into a bit more detail uh, so after the Rendlesham film we're probably going to do one on the Holy Grail uh, the oh, mystical wow. quest for the Holy Grail uh, and there's, there's a lot of information I've gained that because I live in a place called St. Albans in Hertfordshire in England. We've got links here. There's a guy called Francis Bacon mm -hmm. he was born here. He was a 17th century states person, but also a Rosicrucian. Uh, he's got links to Oak Island and is said to be the true author of Shakespeare and things like that. And Deep is the forerunner of the Freemasons. So he he's from my hometown. So we've got some evidence all about this and holy grail and a search for eternal life wow that's that sounds fascinating too i've heard so many stories about that i think the last i heard was that it was buried under some church some small church i think i i forget where but so many yeah, yeah. there's so many stories about the holy grail out there the glastonbury tour joseph Ar arimathea brought it back and buried it in glastonbury yeah something like that there's, there's all sorts of theories around, uh, but I, I I propose that maybe AI is the new Holy Grail, Holy G R capital A capital I L, and that you know our search for eternal life maybe us uploading our consciousness into machines. 
I don't want to do that. But that <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> so, definitely not. Too. That sounds really bad to me. But yeah. It does. It does. <laughs> but, then it, but, 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 but then the quest is, there's always people wanting to, you know, extend their life, have ever-ending life, but why not just enjoy this existence? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you've got people, you know, freezing their heads with the cryogenics and, and wanting to, like, be brought back to life. So, mm. I don't know, Mark, it takes all types, you know? Yeah, usually eccentric, rich billionaires, and they'll yeah. fly up in space and mess the planet up for everyone else. Absolutely. And, well, they're very busy right now making underground bunkers for themselves. So they, <laughs> they know. are, yeah, they are, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if it all ends. I want off this planet. Like, I don't want to be in some underground bunker. I want to be off. I want out of here. Well, we, can, we can contact the aliens and ask them to take us. Yeah, that would be great. That would be that's, that's practice. <laughs> yeah, that would be ideal. Wonderful. Yeah, do <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I, I didn't know you wrote books, too. So I, I'm going to be sure and have links to them as well for yeah they're all on amazon it's mark christopher lee i've got quite a few books now out there appreciate anyone reading some of them are free on kindle there's paperbacks as well so nice anything, appreciate it. anything you. else you want to say in closing about something you're working on or uh, no not really check out the king of ufos yes I'm proud of that Great. i mean my previous film god versus aliens is doing well on tubi in america mainly because we talk about spiritual demons and ufos and mm -hmm. i know we've talked about it before so yeah I'll, be, I'll put links to that as well so folks check in the description of this video because while i do run them across the screen it's hard for people to like write them down or take a screenshot so i always put the links in the description for people this way it's easy for them to just copy and paste them from there and and if anybody has any questions for mark i'm sure they can leave them below and Mark, I, I know we're definitely going to talk again, and I'm so excited for your next film to come out. Yeah, let's talk then. That'd be brilliant. I'd love to chat then. That'd oh, yeah, great. please let me know the release date when it comes out. Yeah, we'll I'll be sure to blast it all over the place. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you. It's always a pleasure, Mark. I'll see you later. Take care. Bye.